Look at that. All right. It is 3.30, and I will call to order the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority, our regular meeting here for August uh, 16th, 2016. Um, the Solid Waste Management Authority of the City of Crescent City and County of Del Norte, uh, State of California, is now in meeting and special session. Only those that marked in specific time will be heard at assigned time. Items might be taken out of sequence to accommodate um, their, the public availability. All right. Do we have, uh, I guess we should do a roll call since we're missing one. Would you do that, please? Commissioner Napa. Here. Commissioner Gastineau. I am here. Commissioner Inscore. Here. Commissioner McClure. All right, would you please join us, Pledge of Allegiance. Ready and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll open up for public comment. Any member of the public can address the Solid Waste Management Authority on any matter on or off the agenda. After rec uh, receiving recognition uh, from the chair, please give your name and address for the record, and we will limit uh, our comments to three minutes. Do we have any public comment? Seeing no public comment, we'll close public comment and go on to our open session items. Our cassette consent agenda has three items. Um, on here, do we have any uh, questions, comments uh, regarding the consent agenda? If not, then I would take a motion regarding the agenda. I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Commissioner Inscore. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Yeah. Commissioner Napa. Yes. All right. We will move on then to item two. That's our director and treasurer's report, Mr. Ward. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Inscore. So coming up uh, this month, we will have our annual household hazardous waste um, collection event. And for the first time, we will be combining that with our mattress recycling event. So the household hazardous waste event will be from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Del Norte County Transfer Station. And the mattress recycling event will also be at the Del Norte County Transfer Station from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. So I uh, want to make sure that people know that this is a free event. Uh, Del Norte County residents can bring up to four mattresses for no charge. Uh, but I do recommend that you either separate those trips or very safely uh, secure your hazardous materials before bringing them. We wouldn't want the hazardous materials to spill onto the mattresses or the mattresses to cause a spill of the hazardous materials as you're trying to load them onto the same truck. So I would, if possible, recommend that you make two separate trips if you've got both mattresses and hazardous waste for recycling. We do take, of course, the most common household hazardous waste at the Del Norte County Transfer Station every day. Use motor oil, used antifreeze, car batteries, uh, uh, paint stains and lacquers in their original non-leaking containers and uh, home generated fluorescent bulbs and uh, televisions. So that's one event that's coming up on September 10th. If you're a business and you've got hazardous materials then we will be taking that by appointment only on Friday September 9th. Under California law businesses or uh, what are known as conditionally exempt small quantity generators are required to have an EPA number and call for an appointment. So if you're a business listening to this uh, online, then please call the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority for further information at 465-1100. The Del Norte County uh, Fair was also uh, sponsored in part by the uh, Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority and we are a major sponsor of this vital community event and we sponsored Family Day, Sunday, August 7th and I'd like to express my appreciation to uh, uh, task force members Craig Strong and Pat Black and, uh, and members of uh, Hamburg WSG who helped staff the booth as well as uh, uh, Lori Poole of Recology. So very much a community effort staffing our booth and sponsoring the fair. 
And then uh, one other thing I guess I'll mention is uh, Charles Steele has uh, resigned as a refuse site attendant and uh, we still have uh, one additional refuse site attendant who's on FMLA leave and we have hired two additional staff uh, who are in training, Ron Fleshman and Haley Smith, trying to address the ongoing staffing challenges of the authority. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the director's report. Yes. The, the mattress collection, mm -hmm. when you say mattress, is that mattress and box spring? Mattresses or box springs, right. So it's four total. Total of four. So two complete bed sets. That's correct. And so if you have, for instance, a California King, what you'll often find is you have two box springs plus mm -hmm. a big mattress. And so that ends up being three units. Do you have any other, any other questions for Mr. Ward? Please reflect that, uh, that Board Member Howard has joined us, if you would, please, in the agenda minutes. All right. Anything else? Very good. Okay. Um, Treasurer? Yeah. The, in generally, uh, the financial reports that we regularly get from the county at the time we were publishing the agenda, those were not yet ready. As you may recall, we have a modified uh, cash basis uh, counting through the county. And so the last month of the fiscal year, June, is often delayed a bit as we're waiting for those accounts to settle out. So that uh, modified the reports in your uh, board packet. If you look at the claims approved by director, you can see that the uh, biggest payments were both a Hambro WSG payment and the payment for the sublease agreement for the uh, transfer station. Um, our revenues generally are continuing their somewhat upward trend, summarizing for the previous fiscal year. Uh, both our uh, authority service fees at the Del Norte County Transfer Station and the franchise fees were uh, a little over 3% ahead of budget, so that was good for the budget. And uh, just looking at the month of July compared to budget and previous years is at this point, the authority service fees are 10% ahead of budget and the franchise fees are 7.3% ahead of budget after one month of the fiscal year. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, Mr. Neff. Um, on page uh, 15, uh, there's item 20285068 for $2,460 and uh, it was not in the budget, so I'm just wondering what that was for. Oh, page which? It's page 15. Um, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not on the online version, so I don't have that page number. Can you read what's on the top of the page? Uh, yeah, Department Budget Report, Solid Waste. Okay. Um, okay, now I'm looking. So it's, I think it's like the third page of that. Yeah, it's the third page of the Department Budget Report under services and supplies. Okay. And um, so about on the third page, it would be about two thirds of the way down. Okay. And uh, what, what's the number, sir? It's zero six eight. So two oh two eight oh, five oh. zero six eight. Yes. Uh, two oh two eight five zero six eight. Is that what you said? Right. Okay. Yes, that is um, a special department expense under the division, uh, Department of Conservation 1314 grant. So that grant year has closed, uh, but because of the county's accounting policies, generally those budget lines are continued on in the years followed just in case there's any residual expenses. But um, you'll see that we have an adopted budget of zero for that uh, for the coming fiscal year. Okay, thanks. Those special department expenses are generally uh, for instance, um, on the Department of Conservation grant, uh, for instance, we recently purchased um, recycling containers for the cultural center. And because those are containers purchased under the grant, that's the kind of thing that's covered under the special department expense. It's a, it's a purchase of a, of a real good. All right, thank you. Yes. On the um, other changes on the depreciation expense. Mm -hmm. Has the budget ad hoc committee or you and the committee been able to talk with the auditor about the JPAs, why other JPAs don't have this line? I do not have a specific answer to that question about other JPAs. 
we've continued to pay this depreciation because my understanding is that as a JPA, we are required to do you so. Look at it. <laughs> you don't want to look at it? Well, I, 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 huh? I, I, I do think it's a, it's a discussion that's, that, that yeah. we need clarification. Thinking that we have to and getting a definitive legal answer that says when we start looking at the at the big things that are ahead of us, i.e. the the, the floor, that that hundred thousand dollars, I mean that it, it, it hardly pays somebody to come over there and measure it. So I mean we've got it we've got it we've got it. It's clear that that's not what this is for. That's what we need that's to have straightened it, up. So I think it's a, an ongoing conversation we need to continue with. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, then, Mr. Taylor, come and give We like answers. The, uh, <laughs> I'm maybe using some old terms, but if you're an enterprise fund, kind of like a business, mm -hmm. governments, are, some of them are required to fund depreciation. Solid waste is one of them. Other government entities don't have to fund depreciation. That's the so some do and some don't. Some do and some don't. It's are government we one code. That does. What's that? So are we one yes. that does? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and we've had this. I've had this talk with Clint. And, and, and so, yeah. like other JPAs in the county, aren't required. If they're not an enterprise fund, an enterprise fund is something like a business, and therefore they're required to fund depreciation. Is what my discussions with him were. Also, so the, the airport's not a business. Yeah, it's not a do they sell things and buy things and like a business? Or they just get money from the government? Huh. Okay. No, they get money for inplanements and deplanements and rental space. And but it's, but I, it's I, like I, a service. If they provide a service for a fee, that would be an enterprise fund. Yeah. Isn't that what yeah. the transfer station does? Exactly. Right. That's, why that's, why we have that's, that's why we're an enterprise fund. So are they an enterprise fund? Oh, the airport or they? The yeah. airport is not. Okay. I, because they get all their funding from the government until they have some sort of income. They do have income. Which is? They have contributions from other entities, like uh, Elk Bell. I'm just questioning. I guess oh. the question would and I guess be, well, the not, answer is, what, and, enterprise, enterprise might not be the fund they use anymore. I'm kind of old, but it was back right. when I did government account, it was called an enterprise fund, and you had to fund depreciation. Okay. Other government entities don't have to, I'll research and I don't it. know about the airport. So it, 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 just using an illustration, if, if the, uh, the wastewater treatment plant was part of a JPA with the county and the city, it's an enterprise fund, it's providing a service, that would require depreciation. I just think like so. This I think the answer is yes. But because it's not a JPA, it's, it's a city thing and it's an enterprise fund, it's treated differently. It's yeah. a JPA with That's enterprise. I, I'm not so sure it's even the JPA. I think it's just an enterprise fund that's supposed okay. to fund depreciation. Great, more questions Thanks. now. <laughs> Quit asking questions, You're making more work. It's a good thing. How about that? Thank you. All right, do we have any more questions for? We should all for just blindly in the dark. Say yes. Don't mention that. We did that last week. I don't, know. I don't want to talk about it. Blindly in the dark. Okay, Mr. Work, Mr. Work, we will, we will reel this back in. Thank you so much for your report. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we, we move on? Not under items two. All right. So we had a $28,000 to the good year. Yes, and I'll, uh, yes. Good. Fantastic. Generally, we're definitely in the black for the year, but uh, it's important to realize that as a whole, the agency is in the red because a part of the formation of this agency was that we took responsibility for the Crescent City landfill, which is a liability that continues to drag our books down. And that's part of the challenge of funding things like the floor repair, which are coming up, uh, because uh, there is, uh, as Mr. Shad has explained it to us, there's uh, something called the Balanced Budget Act that applies to local governments. And so that, um, uh, that liability on our books uh, essentially acts as a limit to how much money uh, can be spent from the cash balance available. But every year uh, that we have a positive cash flow like this, that liability goes down. We've That's seen correct. that go liability go down significantly in recent years. That's correct. We're, we are climbing out of the hole. Yeah. Mr. Hunt. 
does that limit our ability to borrow? Uh, it, it might it might very well, although we'll have this discussion in detail. It might be that even though we have cash reserves supposedly in the bank, we might still have to do financing in order to pay for what we have ahead of us because of this balanced budget requirement. Okay. Anything else? We're going to move on to item three then, um, landfill post-closure. Um, Items 3.1, 3.2, Mr. Wood? So item 3.1 is a revised semi-annual monitoring report. Every uh, six months we uh, prepare and submit this to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. And historically this has been prepared and submitted by staff, uh, our staff working with the County Engineering Department. And uh, the regulations pertaining to these reports continues to advance. and these reports are now required to be prepared by an engineer that's appropriately certified to deal with these kinds of issues. So moving forward, it looks like we will have to retain the services of a water quality engineer to, to uh, prepare and submit these reports. However, uh, as uh, in my view, the uh, contracted relationship with Lawrence and Associates has been very beneficial to the agency as it's their work that's really strengthened our arguments that uh, we will be able to have our waste discharge requirements fee reduced significantly uh, moving forward. So uh, essentially this item 3.1 is just a receive and file. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but they do do a, an analysis of the water quality data on site at the Crescent City landfill, uh, including the monitoring of the residential wells. It looks like in uh, moving forward, the Regional Water Quality Control Board will likely be asking us to regularly monitor those residential wells, as well as the newly drilled well E4 pair, E4 shallow and E4 deep, which are essentially between the landfill mound and the residents to the northeast of the landfill. So our monitoring and reporting program is probably going to change in the next year or so. And uh, we are working with the Regional Water Quality Control Board staff to ascertain exactly what it is we're going to be sampling from which wells uh, in the next few weeks. So those discussions are continuing. But in general, I think uh, Lawrence and Associates is doing a fine job for us. And uh, we'll just receive and file this report. Okay. Yes. So just to, to back me up, so I mm -hmm. become familiar with how these type of items that are mandated or budgeted for, if I went back into the 15, 16 budget, I'd see this. Were we aware of it at the time that we'd have to get an engineer to do the report? No, I, able to no I was not. We're gonna have to do a budget revision. So so moving forward, 16, 17, do we budget for this type of expense then? Uh, I Like I said, I did not incorporate this in the 16, 17 budget, but for the 17, okay, 18 I budget, I will, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions about the, the technical aspect of this report? Okay, then we'll receive it and file okay. it. Let's move on to 3.2, this change order two. Uh, this is the second change order with Lawrence and Associates. As I mentioned, they're uh, continuing to provide good services for us. Uh, one of the things that uh, was required by the Regional Water Quality Control Board as they're reviewing this report is they wanted that well SM6 to be redeveloped, essentially, uh, trying to make sure that it's purged of any silt that may have gotten in there and that it's uh, uh, inspected to make sure that the well is continues to have integrity. Um, then, of course, there's the preparation of groundwater monitoring reports. As I just mentioned, that's, that'll be required. And then additional technical support. We've uploaded most of our water quality uh, data. Uh, well, Kayleen Warner, our facilities and programs coordinator, coordinator has done that to the geo tracker system, which is required by the Regional Water Quality Control Board. And uh, Lawrence and Associates has been helpful in that regard. So staff recommend approval of this change order in amount not to exceed an additional $8,200. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Thanks. The, um, you said redevelop the well? Redevelopment of the well, yes. So what part of the, how much of the budget is associated with that redevelopment? Uh, that is uh, $2,690. Do we know who they're subcontracting that out to? No, no they, they're coming up themselves. They have the equipment to do that? Yeah, they do. And that well is, um, <clears throat> it, it is uh, subject to a few challenges. Namely, it's in the middle of a road. And so, consequently, their stuff tends to fall into it. We now have a locking cap on top of it, 
but it's at it's it's right next to the landfill and it's in the middle of the road. So both those things kind of uh, make it a little bit more problematic. The well of the road. The uh, the the technical support under task E. Mm -hmm. um, once this is in place, will it allow us to continue to? enter this stuff into the geo tracker this is not going to be an ongoing expense this is basically just equipping us to continue with what we're already doing that's that's correct for the geo tracker entry that Lawrence and Associates has been tremendously helpful but Kayleen Warners had learned a lot about the process and I believe after this technical assistance then we'll probably be able to do it on our own okay. uh, unlike the semi-annual reports where we will continue to need uh, an independent some some collaboration with the okay water quality engineering company okay so the total of these is eighty two hundred dollars then that's correct okay do you have any other questions mr. Ward okay then uh, if not I would take a motion that we uh, approve change order two to the press professional services agreement with Lawrence and Associates so moved do you have a second second all right would you please pull the vote Commissioner Inscore. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Yes. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Napa. Yes. Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Great. And that approves unanimously. We'll move on then to collection franchise, which we have no items, so we'll move on from there and go to number five, which is the transfer station. Mr. Ward, would you talk to us about the request from Hambro WSG? Yes. This uh, this letter was received in June and and briefly addressed on the June meeting. Uh, my uh, read of the tone of the board at the time was that the board generally supported uh, making this additional payment. I, I do need to note that uh, the delays in the CPI adjustment uh, were somewhat unavoidable by the requirements that we have. Namely, uh, if there is a new fee, such as the state fee imposed by the state of Oregon on the landfill where to, which is receiving my, our materials, then that requires a rate ordinance. And a rate ordinance takes a three-month process because we have to publish a, a public notice, have a public hearing. So it pushes us into a three-month process. And so at the date that we received uh, the information about this new additional fee, there was really no way that we could complete all of the uh, process that we needed to by the time uh, uh, July 1st rolled around when we would normally Im Im implement the changes based on the consumer price index changes. If uh, the board approves this, uh, I would not be surprised if Recology would not make a similar request and that request would probably be about twice this amount. So uh, the staff calculate that the additional payment if approved would be $1,167 to Hamburg WSG based on the deferred implementation of the consumer price index adjustments. Is it, I mean, doesn't this, these CPI numbers are rolled out quarterly, aren't they? I mean, you have, a, you have an annual, but, but it, would it be possible for us to be able to look at, at a previous quarter to, to get this estimated amount that we could work off of as opposed to having to do this with this delay or is that is that even feasible it's it's not very feasible in that the, the consumer price index is are released uh, several months after the month has passed so for instance even though we will adopt these change orders for the implementation of the fee changes in July and we'll push it to the last moment we can come uh, May and June, usually the best index we can find is March. And so the April and May numbers aren't available. So March ends up being the closest to the July date that we can get. Does that answer your question? So if we have the March data, then why don't we simply apply it? And I mean, if we have it, I, I guess the question then would be, can we back up to the previous quarter and use and agree to use that number so that that we have it, so we have it in March? Do, uh, does CPI only come out annually? No. no, I think um, the issue that we had this year is is not what you're addressing. Oh, okay. um, it wasn't an, an issue with finding out what the CPI number was. The issue was that because 
So normally we do this by resolution, which is a one meeting thing, uh -huh. if it's just CPI. Uh -huh. But this year, because there were other adjustments, including the um, sort of pass through from the Oregon state imposed landfill fee, right. we had to actually do an ordinance. So to do it all at one time, it took longer than normal you know we had to introduce it take it to the city and county and bring it back and then wait 30 days before implementing it so that drew it out um you know to be implemented how late are we a month well, it, it was implemented august 1 instead of july 1. so right. it was one month delay so normally this if it's just a cpi adjustment as we are used to doing it's normally just done by resolution at one meeting Doesn't and apply. okay it, clear thank you Anybody else? Okay. Any discussion uh, regarding the uh, the request itself? All right. Then I will uh, I will look for any action on part of the uh, uh, of this commission regarding this request. Yes, sir. Mr. White, would you like to talk to us? I would. Thank you. Wes White with the Hamburg WSG. Um, our view is a little bit different than um, what might what might, one might pull out of the staff report. Our view is that, number one, this request is for a CPI increase only. There was no delay by Hamburg WSG in getting a timely letter to the authority for the CPI increase. Separate from that, and what caused the rate, I guess, ordinance to be implemented was the 58 cent increase right. by the Oregon uh, EPA. So they're two separate, in my mind, and distinct things. What we're asking for is the CPI increase in July, which is figured, staff figured it, and I figured it exactly the same, and that is for the CPI increase, which, um, so um, I received a call from both Recology and from the authority staff regarding can we delay it rather than implement two different rate increases. And in the spirit of cooperation and partnership with everyone, we said, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so. That was why we went ahead and did it and delay it because you think about Recology would have to go through sending out however many customers they have, let's say 4,000 customers, one increase, and then a month later the same thing. Likewise, the authority would have to publish one let, uh, July 1st rate increase and then another 58 cent rate increase for that. So just so it, it's kind of confusing, but hopefully that explains a little bit better. So we would appreciate uh, anything you can do, but. It's, it's not a huge amount of money, so do what you like. Thank you. Thank you. Then I'd make that motion for the authority to board direct staff for the change order authorizing the one-time payment of $1,167 for the annual service fee adjustment. I have a motion. Do you have a second? Second. All right. I have a motion second. Any further discussion? Do we have any public comment on this item? Nope. Oh. All right. Um, could I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. Okay. So, in other words, because of the uh, Oregon EPA and because of that, it created delay this year. So, in other words, for future years, we don't anticipate this kind of a delay? That's correct. Uh, uh, unless there is a, an additional similar law that's adopted. The other thing that triggered the need for the ordinance was the establishment of the new uh, textile recycling service, which, of course, we're very happy to, to have start up. Thanks. Good. All right. Having no public comment, no further discussion from the board, then I'd ask you if you'd please pull the vote. Commissioner McClure? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Napa? Yes. Commissioner Gastineau? Yes. Commissioner Inscore? Yes. All right. Very good. We will move on to uh, number six on our agenda, other general solid waste authority matters. And our 6.1 is a uh, discussion and action uh, regarding our board officers. Um, as I think you're all aware, uh, 
I am the vice chair and acting as chair right now, but we do need to uh, address our officers. And uh, so, Mr. Ward, do you want to speak to this? Sure. Um, at the last meeting, uh, uh, Commissioner McClure uh, stepped down in her role as chair. Uh, we currently have Commissioner Inscor serving as vice chair and Commissioner Gassnow serving as secretary. Under the uh, bylaws, there are three officers, chair, vice chair, and secretary, and so it's appropriate that at this time the board appoint a chair. I had motion that Blake Henscourt be appointed chair. Second. Any other nominations? <laughs> you know the answer to that. All right, all right. any discussion? Um, we have a motion, any public comment? I didn't bring anybody to say that's a bad idea. So. All right then, please pull the vote. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Napa. Yes. Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Commissioner Inscor. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Yes. All right. Uh, now, congratulations, uh, Chair Inscore, and that leaves a vacancy for Vice Chair. I, I move that uh, we consider Mr. Howard as Vice Chair. And I'd nominate Mr. Nafa. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll second Mr. Howard. Unfor unfor <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> Mr. Nafa can, is, cannot be nominated. It has to be a city or county person to serve in, in this capacity, but that was, a, that was a nice try. Good deflection. <laughs> Good deflection. Uh, all right, good. It, it, it's 4-1. It's you, you get the toast. All right. Uh, all right. I don't think the public, does the public want to weigh in on, on Mr. <laughs> Howard? <laughs> no. All right. Well, please uh, pull the vote then. Commissioner Napa. Yes. Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Commissioner Inscor. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Commissioner Howard. Yes. <laughs> Very good. All right. We've got those two things taken care of. Uh, 6.2, uh, we have uh, several requests for uh, allocations of authority allocated bin pulls. So you want to talk to us about that? Sure. Under our collections uh, franchise agreement with Recology, uh, the authority has 20 bin pulls that is uh, up to the authority's direction about how they're used. They're generally used for community events such as 4th of July or the Del Norte County Fair and there are a number of events such as the beach cleanup that are regularly supported using these dumpsters. But because it is the same cost to the authority or functionally regardless of the bin size, there's always an effort to try to keep those to a minimum. Last year we did have uh, four or five remaining at the end of the year and so those were used to help uh, defray the costs of servicing the Gasky and Klamath transfer stations. But this last uh, month, we've received uh, new requests for events that had not previously been supported using these authority bin pulls. And so just at this meeting, we will be, uh, you will be looking at requests for the city of Crescent City for two bin pulls in support of the first annual Find Your Park event. Uh, from Randy Hatfield for three in support of the Del Norte County Fair. He sent an email, unfortunately, uh, because of our special meeting uh, uh, date he missed the deadline for that meeting, and so consequently, this is a retroactive request. Uh, Recology has already uh, serviced those, at least started servicing those bins, but they have not yet billed for them. So we've arranged that, uh, depending upon how the board decides, will impact uh, who gets that bill or not. Uh, there's been a request uh, forwarded by Commissioner uh, Howard from Supervisor Roger Gitlin for one on behalf of the Take a Bite Out of Blight group for a community cleanup. And uh, there's been a request uh, also from the Crescent City Del Norte County Chamber of Commerce for three in support of the annual Sea Cruise Car Show and the Blues, Brews, and Cruise event. So if all of these were approved and the board uh, has a similar number of requests as we received in the previous year, this will deplete uh, the remaining bin polls that are available for the rest of the year, assuming that those other requests come in and the board approves as you have in years past for events like the annual beach cleanup in September. All right, very good. Yes. How large are these bins? The, the, it varies in size. They can be up to 40 cubic yards for the same bin pull. Though it's important to realize that this is not the entirety of the cost. 
because while the authority does have the ability to allocate the bins and have those collected, the disposal cost still is assessed by Hamburg WSG and either needs to be paid or explicitly waived by them. The, then, um, I know this is the first event of uh, Find Your Parks, but they've requested two. Mm -hmm. So one's not enough for... Well, there's always the, the challenge of which bins they want where and how. So, yes, they've requested two. Okay. And they'll probably be like they are on 4th of July. One by the slab and one down towards the sewer. Oftentimes. And, and then sometimes, for instance, uh, 4th of July, we also had one of the bin poles end up being functionally the uh, street side uh, trash and, and recycling containers. So it rather depends upon the particular event and what they need. Okay. I'm just ready to make a motion because I strongly support uh, supporting the community and uh, community type events uh, such as these. And then also the fact that uh, we're nearing towards the end of the year. I'm hoping that this may be the end of it. So as a result, I will make a motion that we um, Approve the four requests for a total of nine bin pulls for one thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars and forty-four cents. All right. Do I have a second? Second for discussion. All right. We will open it up for uh, discussion before we do that. Why don't I just open it up for any public comment, and then we'll bring it back to the uh, board for discussion. Any public comment regarding this request? Seeing on close public comment, bring back to the board for for discussion regarding the requests. I I like that we're able to do this, and when I looked at our um, policies, it it seems to be for the greater good of the community. It seems to be that we set these aside for events, like the um, for instance, we don't work close to the end towards December. But I don't know what the downtown divas have planned for December, if there's a celebration going to happen or an activity. Christmas parade. Christmas parade, you know, how big it grows and that kind of thing. Do they need the public, um, the public assistance in making this? And then I'm gonna move right into the take a bite out of blight. I have no problem with people wanting to clean up the community. However, when I read the, when I read the report, it's to do an encampment to clean up an encampment. And I know that uh, the city of Eureka had to go through several hoops at, through the court system in order to get the authority to be able to remove people's personal possessions. And um, the city of Oakland also went through several court cases in determining the possessions because um, it's not a crime to be homeless and it's not a crime to have possessions, but it is a crime for me to come and take someone else's possessions. Mm -hmm. And um, I got an email today from, uh, let me see, I had it open here, from Lindell uh, Scarborough of EFW Auxiliary asking that if we do approve this, that we make sure that the volunteers are trained to be mindful of personal property and not just throw everything out of the area. Some folks may be staying there or close or maybe leaving their possessions there for safekeeping and, all, and that is all that they have. So please be mindful of tents, sleeping bags, blankets, and so forth. Set that stuff aside as the owners will likely be back and focus simply on the actual trash. And that was the request. It, it, to me, this kind of offering, you know, would this mean that next week someone from you know, that lives on, uh, I'll pick a road, South Bank, that they have a, a, an encampment, so they want, it, they, want, they want that for their neighbor. I just don't see it as the community-minded event. We have to solve the problem of people who are living without any means and who are, who are um, struggling on the street. But I'm not sure, in my, it's my personal opinion, that it's a slippery, slippery slope when you start giving out free government assistance for a group of people who are volunteers, not even part of the government, that will come in and take away people's personal possessions. 
so I would suggest that this one be put on hold until we can have attorneys take a look at it and, and have some kind of plan because I see this as a wide door opening and so people could start asking for that and I've been in enough of the encampments to know that the folks who are suffering are also many times also people who are working in the community. The folks who are suffering that are doing with hardly anything are doing that, a lot of them are doing that because of whatever their predicament is, not because they want to be Lofska's or scoff laws, or not that they're all criminals. Mm -hmm. So I would say I could approve these, but I would hope that we would ask our attorneys to look at this because I think it's a slippery slope when you start taking um, piece of people's personal possessions. I don't know if you want to comment on that, Council, or? I'd certainly like her to. Um, well, I haven't thought a lot about this, but you know what, what you're saying is true about removing um, people's personal possessions, and you, you, just because they're left on a sidewalk in a public place doesn't mean that the government can come along and scoop them up. Mm -hmm. um, um, and although this would be community um, action, not necessarily government, when the government steps in and starts sponsoring things, then you become involved in somewhat. Um, implicated in the responsibility for the behavior so that would be the risk to the authority um, um, no I don't think that liability is a stretch um, I, I think it's hard to say because um, like for me personally, I'm not, I'm not engaged with the group. I don't know exactly what their plans and practices are. So, you know, their idea might be to come in and just, you know, clean everything up and what's one person's, um, might see as trash. Somebody else may not. Um, it's also county property. Is that problematic? Um, well, it could be for the county. Um, if, the, if it's county property and the county is allowing the activity to take place, and they do take some uh, responsibility for the activities that are being allowed to be conducted. That, that's where some of my questions uh, lie. Is uh, well, a couple of questions. Maybe first question: ha Has has the authority um, previously? granted a request to take a bite out of blight as a group I believe the take a bite out of blight group has been involved in cleanups that the authority has authorized um, I don't know that they've involved homeless encampments and I, I think the questions that uh, the commissioners are raising here are all real good ones sure uh, not really covered by the current criteria right. for uh, allocating these bins if the okay. board is interested Staff can certainly look at developing uh, more details on these kinds of questions about homeless encampments and county properties. For instance, uh, I don't know if the county has a, a mechanism or a process by which they establish of the county-owned properties, which ones are the priorities for being cleaned up. I don't know if such a process exists. I don't know if there's a process, for instance, also saying, all right, of the homeless encampments, the following are of greatest environmental concern. I don't know if such a process exists. If in, in doing a cleanup, uh, making sure that law enforcement is appropriately involved yeah. and people are appropriately trained, again, I'm not sure of what process that is, but to the extent that the authority supports these kinds of activities, it makes sense that we would uh, and, and jump that, through those And that's, that's my concern, Mr. Ward, and to the rest of the board, is that that there is a greater responsibility that I feel that we have as the authority to look to the to the community. Um, yes, I, I, I support trying to clean up blight. We need to do those things. I, 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 there's no doubt about that. But there should be process for all these things. If it's on county property, my question would be before I say yes to a request, has the county authorized this action? Uh, we have two supervisors here, maybe, and then maybe that, and then maybe that, maybe that doesn't happen at the board level. That could be at the staff level, certainly. Uh, but I would, 
with a request like this, I would like us to look at this from the standpoint of saying, if we're going to get a request from an individual or an entity or an organization, uh, if it involves public property, then the corresponding entity that owns that property needs to have given us uh, some kind of letter that says we are in approval of this, this cleanup action. Uh, and that would be, then they are taking responsibility for that. Uh, all with the things that you mentioned, uh, I'm very concerned about about volunteers uh, being in any kind of homeless encampment without having uh, this been weighed out by law enforcement. Uh, I've been in some of the encamp encampments as well. I think that there's a safety factor that we should that we should at least consider before we, in essence, put our stamp of approval and put public funds towards something and say we think it's a good idea for you to go in there and clean out all this stuff I, even if i think it's a good idea to clean them up i still think we have a greater responsibility and we should put a process into place if it's not there yet and i read our our policies and it is somewhat vague but let's figure this out be, before we have a problem if we can Mr. Yeah. Okay. thank you and I too agree that there needs to be process in place. Um, my concern is, is I guess we don't have enough information on the table right now. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to turn off the great volunteerism that I see taking place with a community group that has done, I'd say, an extremely admirable job the last several years in tackling these type of issues. And I don't know. I. I, being one who has organized volunteers in the past, know how difficult it is to get yep. them to the table. And I'm not entirely sure that by us giving the blessing through this donation of a bin necessarily links us directly to the cause of the volunteers cleaning up of the Delnark County site. So one concession that I'd ask the commission to consider is essentially a conditional approval of this bin donation um, specific to the county's approval for the cleanup on the site. So if a letter is then provided to the commission by the county that authorizes this activity, I think at that point the authority's liability potentially is dissolved. Um, we're just donating a bin, and I could be wrong, but I'd... I, I, I would certainly would be a lot happier if we had, had buy-in from the county a letter authorizing the the activity but I still think we need to look at the process going forward and I well, specifically think we need to look at the process of, of, of requests made by an individual because this group is a loose group of, of well-meaning people who are doing a great job but it's not an entity it's not a 501c3 it, it, they, we, they've talked yeah. about some of those things it, it, it's not a organization yeah, I, I, and, I, and I understand that but it's very difficult to organize volunteers in this community and I don't want this authority to be the one who says yay or nay as far as discouraging this type of activity specifically no. for cleanups no, and that's not my and opinion. so if there's a process I don't want to I don't want this particular effort stalled out as we debate process specific to donation uh, agreed I'm just going to weigh in one more time that our bin collections have been for events to collect the trash that's generated at events. This request is to go in and it says it. They want a recology dumpster to remove trash from illegal encampment area situated on Del Norte County land directly northeast of Walmart. This area was cleaned up before, and it was cleaned up, I think, with bins that were donated by Recology, not through us. And I have no idea if Hambrose took it, the, the trash for free or not. So I don't think it did, because I think it ended up maybe being Daily Bread Ministries, that somebody else paid for the disposal of the, of the, um, the waste that was collected. My issue here, is not to protect, my issue here is to protect, it's called property rights, it's private property rights, it's the individual, what they own. And for us to say that we can go in for an illegal encampment and we can take what they, what they um, 
people have as their possessions smacks in the face of the right for people to be living in a free and, and public country. And not only do I think it, it smacks right in the face of what they possess, but even if I had land and had people that came to squat on my land and I had an encampment that I didn't like on my land and I wanted to get rid of, I have to go through the courts to do that. I can't just go there and say, hey, get off my property. No, I have to go through an, evic an eviction process even if I didn't invite them to the land in the first place. So how can a county that owns property authorize someone to come in and be evicted because we want to clean up blight and protect volunteers? I don't, for me, no. I want to protect the rights of individual citizens of the United States, period. Anything down here at this end? Nothing. No? Okay. I, I, I guess I'll weigh in one more time. Um, I think that, that, that I could be amendable to moving forward if we provided the assurance, number one, from the county that they are authorizing it. And secondly, that whether that's done through code enforcement or through the sheriff's office, that there is clear instruction and guidance given to this organization and to its volunteers regarding the very issues that, that, uh, that, that was just mentioned regarding personal property rights, because I think that is a valid, a valid concern that should be addressed by any volunteer that's, that's involved in any of these, in, in a, a cleanup like this. Because it, it's not the first and it won't be the last cleanup like this, even if there's not a request coming back to us, it's good education for volunteers to, to realize the, the value of personal property rights. Because we've done cleanups on public land before. But that's at dump sites. There's a it's big different. difference between an encampment and a dump site. Yep. Now, a person who has a attitude towards those people living in an encampment might see it as a dump site. I see it as a desperate place for the people are trying to, to have an existence. Otherwise, just shoot them. I mean, what, what, what are we doing? We're, we're running some people, chasing them around. You know, if you want to clean something up, I can give you I can give you a RV that needs to be cut up in Klamath that 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 recology bin could go in to a day. I mean, I can give you stuff that's been dumped all over the county. We can go to Pacific Shores and clean up a dump site. This is not a dump site. This is people's personal property. And you know, we can be mean and nasty people in this community if we want to. But I put down the last, my, my hands flat and hard because people need to be protected and chasing them around because there's plenty of places to clean up. If you want to use volunteers and clean up blight, there's plenty of places that are not going to have people's personal property on it. But I, I can be happy to be Sorry. the silent vote. I have another question. Yeah. Um, did we participate in the cleanup on public lands on South Beach? with a bin donation? Uh, we, we certainly participate in the annual beach in cleanups, beach yes. But not this specific cleanup by this group last year? I, I don't think so. I'd have to look back at it. I, I, I'm not. Did Recology get bins? Yeah, I think they may have gotten bins, but then I think these guys didn't take it for free and there was a problem and some people had to end up paying. I just have one comment. Um, I'd like to see, you know, if these type of activities are going on, whether they're on public property or private property, that the landowner not only let us know that they're authorizing the activity, but that they also indemnify the authority in case they do cross those lines, then, um, you know, we would, we would be protected. Well, we, we, we will bring it back. We do have a motion and a second. And, um, and I, I would like to modify my motion. Very well. Okay. So I would like to modify my motion to uh, include the eight 
bins that are for community events and uh, and then as far as the uh, last request for the uh, take a blight out of uh, take a bite out of blight that uh, once we get uh, authorization uh, from the county uh, and that we're indemnified that at that point uh, we should address that separately second that motion Okay, so we have a, a, an amendment to the initial m motion to approve all of these. That includes um, ensuring that the, the request for take a bite out of blight is accompanied with a, a letter of approval and, and identification from the county prior to approving that. Yeah, and, and what I'm actually saying is approve the eight and not the ninth one now and that once we do get the authorization from the county and indemnification, that at that point we could address it. So you'd bring it back. So we'd that would be brought back. back to a future right. meeting. Okay. Right. All right. You good with that? Second. All right, any other discussion? I, I just yes. want to add one more thing, is that I think it really needs to be vetted, that it's not that the county says it's okay to go clean it up, but that it's really vetted on the protection of personal property. That how is that going to be addressed? Because I think that is a big, huge part. When I, because I've met people on the street where they come and they say they took everything. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it, it, and it's like this empty, hollow thing. Because it's not they took everything. It's that they took everything. I mean, these people are like Lake County fire survivors every day when people steal all of their stuff. And we need to be a kinder society, and that's the first step. I'd like to believe that this provides us an opportunity for some better education of what we're doing with the, the, the work that I think we're trying to do with help with the Homeless Evaluation Liaison Program. I'd like to believe, because I want to be an optimist, and I want to that, that, that in this process it doesn't come off as oh well we're just holding up trying to clean up the community what we're trying to do is educate our community and our community leaders and volunteers of how we can do these things do them right at the same time respect the rights of, of, of people everybody should be treated with the same level of, of dignity that you and I get sitting here and that's a challenge we all know it's a challenge but it doesn't mean that we ought not be trying. And I think that this provides us an opportunity for education. Let's learn from it, establish a better process going forward. And I think that we'll be, we'll be well served, all of us, I hope. That's what I want to believe, so. All right, we have motion, second, an amended motion and second. Uh, would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Commissioner Inscore. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Yes. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Napa. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you for the, the robust discussion about all of that. Appreciate it. Uh, the uh, we'll go on to 6.3, which is a discussion regarding our advocacy positions or lack thereof regarding uh, Propositions 65 and 67 on the November ballot. Here in California, Mr. Ward. As the board is aware, um, uh, Recology Del Norte and Drew Linder Recycling have asked to modify the list of materials being collected and included in the requested modification is dropping, possibly dropping plastic bag recycling here in Del Norte County. And as there were two uh, ballot initiatives addressing plastic bags, uh, the board had asked that we uh, examine those for the possible uh, adoption of an advocacy position. The two propositions that relate to plastic bags are proposi propositions 67 and 65. 67 is essentially uh, a referendum that was brought by, uh, largely financed and brought forth by uh, plastic bag manufacturers outside of California and they were challenging Senate Bill 270, which was uh, adopted and signed into law in 2014. But that would be a plastic ban, plastic bag ban statewide, uh, implemented primarily at large grocery stores and primarily for the checkout bags. Uh, so 
there are exceptions for produce and meat and uh, a few other things in smaller uh, containers, but it would stem the tide of plastic bags uh, that are uh, being put into the waste stream and being put into our recycling stream. The other proposition is Proposition 65, brought by the same groups, and as far as we can tell, it's primarily to confuse the electorate because it would essentially make uh, grocery stores who are selling reusable bags donate the receipts of those funds to the Wildlife Conservation Board, uh, but it's not very well written, uh, and so it's uh, confusing in a number of different ways as to how it actually would be implemented. Uh, and in general, uh, the conventional wisdom is the more propositions on the ballot, the more likely that people will just become fatigued by the number of propositions and vote no on everything, which would work very well for the people who are putting the uh, propositions uh, forward. The simple message that is being adv advocated by uh, Californians Against Waste and a wide variety of governments, because now in California, over 150 governments have banned plastic bags uh, because of their impact on the environment. And so this statewide ban, in some ways, is a way of making those uh, laws a little bit more uniform across the state. So um, if the board were to adopt a position on Proposition 65, it would probably be to, to vote no. Uh, and staff would recommend that on Proposition 67, which of the two is the more important one, that the board consider adopting a yes position and encouraging others to vote yes on Proposition 67 to uh, implement the bag ban. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, got some uh, questions? No need. I'd actually like to move that on with the support of Proposition 67. Okay. Do we have any public comment regarding our adequacy or lack thereof of 67 65? Need a little more controversy, Mr. Cassidy. No, 67. All right. No, no, I think not, we need, not only do we need to support Prop 67, but we probably need to hopefully maybe get an op ed or maybe paper to help us. requirement that people are supposed to put those in their trash, but once it gets to Jalindra, it has to go back into the trash because there's nowhere to get it recycled. And the same is with um, milk cartons and number seven plastic and styrofoam, all of that, even though we're recycling, there's no longer any market because the recycling market has totally collapsed. And so we need to get the voice out to the people that it's not that we don't want to be in their business of what kind of bag they have. It's we have nowhere to put this, and it's polluting and doing horrible stuff to our oceans and beaches. But I would like to talk then that in the Mojo Walk, the two women that just walked the California coast, they want to have straws they <laughs> Because they said there are more straws on the beach huh. than anything else that they picked up all the way. Huh. That's, well, you have to go on the Mojo site, but that's what they said, yeah. Well, because they were in a lot of remote places where that stuff washes back up. All right. So we have a motion that we uh, that we take a stance of, of supporting um, ballot proposition 67. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to comment that, uh, personally, I would like to oppose uh, 65. Uh, I don't know if we should do it as a separate one. Um, but, but the reason that I would say opposing 65 is because of uh, what you guys are saying, that uh, since we do not have a market in our county, it does not benefit us to have 65. And I think it might end up being confusing, uh, you know, because of that, if, if we just support one and sort of like leave the other one hanging. So because of the fact that we don't have a market that I think it behooves us to oppose 65 and make it clear to the residents that it's not going to help us out and only 67 would. 
I'd amend my motion to support Proposition 67 and continue a campaign of education around Proposition 65 that we would oppose. All right. And my second second. Second. We have a motion second to both of those. Any public comment? Any other discussion? All right. Would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Inscore. Yes. Commissioner McClure. Yes. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Naffa. Yes. Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Very good. And uh, Mr. Ward, any any assistance that, that any of us can be to to get that message out? If uh, I I will uh, uh, work with the chair and other board leadership in drafting a. Uh, Coastal Voices piece for the awesome. triplicate uh, on this issue. Follow up question, Chair? Yeah. We have a budget specifically for this kind of advocacy, correct? Uh, it's pretty minimal. Uh, I, we don't actually have a specific advocacy budget per se. Okay. So we do have an advertising budget. And this could be construed to. It could be. Thank you. Okay. I, I think we need to, we may need to be creative in our thinking about communicating this message. Clearly. Thank you. Very healthy discussion. Thank you for the commissioner's engagement. Really appreciate it. I, I did want to uh, note that, uh, of course, the op-ed won't cost us anything. But uh, I think what Commissioner Howard might be getting at, which might make sense for us to talk about, whether it's today or at the next meeting, would be whether or not we want to be a little more proactive and actually have some advertising dollars uh, you know, spent uh, on, on that behalf. Yes. Thank you for that suggestion. Well, not only that, but I, I think that we need to engage. I'm sorry. We need to engage in our, our in our partners with both, with both Recology and Julindra. This is a big issue, and it, and it directly impacts them. To have them join us in in this process, and in in some of the cost of this. I don't mind saying that. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, this is impacting them greatly. But that whole burden doesn't fall just on the authority, from my perspective. It, it is a community concern, and yes, we may take the lead, but we have partners here that we work with. Uh, we, we proved that today with being willing to make adjustments with CPI, with, with Hamaru WSG. I think we're doing our part. I don't think that there's anything wrong with asking our partners to come back to the table and help us as we help the community. I think that's just, that, I think that's just fair for us to, to do that. I think it's an excellent point. We'll also engage our uh, statewide colleagues uh, on this because there are other jurisdictions who are also facing very similar issues yep. and to the extent that we can leverage each other's efforts. Anything we can makes do. sense to do so. And I think that if we take real, a real good look at the polling, we may or may not need to spend money on that. Yeah. We just need to look at But at this point, the short pitch is go all the way to the bottom of the ballot and vote yes. That's right. Because <laughs> huh. 67 is absolutely the last proposition. 67. The bottom line is yes. Missing on the, on the ballot is you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, let's move on. We're, 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 we're getting close. 6.4 discussion and, and possible approval of new, new legal service agreement. With Black and Rice LLP. Uh, Black and Rice has been our attorneys for uh, many years, and I think they've done an admirable job. They are uh, adjusting their uh, hourly rates slightly upward, but they have not done so since uh, 2011, I think. 2012. 2012. So it's been a few years, and it's a slight adjustment. I think they're good services. Um, staff recommend approval. All right. Any questions? Public comment. Seeing none, close that. Bring it back to the uh, to the board. We have a motion. Yes. Come on, it's your turn. No, it's my turn. Yeah. All right, I'll move that we approve the uh, new legal services agreement with Black and Rice LLP. Attorneys of law. Do I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Please pull the vote. Commissioner McClure. Yes. Commissioner Howard. Yes. Commissioner Naffa. Yes. Commissioner Gastineau. Yes. Commissioner Inscore. Yes. 
6.5 discussion possible approval of paying fiscal year 1617 membership dues to the rural counties environmental services joint powers authority this is probably the the most effective uh, single organization that rural counties have in organizing and educating each other about the various issues that we share in common uh, this is uh, while it appears to be a fairly large annual membership I know that uh, Delmar County has benefited from this relationship in any number of ways. Uh, Larry Sweetser, who's a consultant for uh, the ESJPA, regularly educates us on very complicated regulatory issues pertaining to household hazardous waste and universal waste. And like I said, this is a way of, of coordinating the rural counties' efforts for uh, focused advocacy on issues affecting rural counties. So for instance, one of those recently was uh, AB 1826, which is uh, requiring larger jurisdictions above 70,000 to implement mandatory commercial composting, um, thankfully, because we are below that population threshold and in part because of the lobbying efforts of the SJPA, That uh, requirement does not currently apply to Delmar County. So just on that issue alone, the membership is more than paid for. Did you, did you budget for this? Yes. Yes, Mr. Howard. And that's what I was going to ask specifically in line item uh, 2200. The $7,600 budgeted, uh, what's the breakdown of the remainder? It includes um, $6,000 uh, $6, for um, the ESJPA, $1,000 for the California Product Stewardship Council, and lesser amounts for um, Californians Against Waste. Okay, but this is our most effective. This is the biggest one. Okay. Good. As far as Prop 65 and 67, would this be, I would assume, a good organization to ask them about the group effort of trying to do I it in the regionally? Uh, that's an excellent suggestion. I'll certainly contact Mary Pitto about that very issue. Uh, not surprisingly, it's, it's kind of rare for uh, uh, boards like this to adopt uh, advocacy positions on ballot initiatives, but it's certainly timely and very appropriate but uh, we will try to coordinate our efforts with every ally. So, yes. Okay, anything else? All right, now, there be public comment on this item. Yes. Wes White with Hanfro WSG. Um, my personally had experience with uh, Larry Sweetser, very knowledgeable individual. He helps actually educate uh, some of the transfer station staff on the best uh, methodologies for dealing with hazardous waste. I would certainly support uh, our uh, dues membership and in entering into this. It's in the past, it hasn't been for the last few years, so uh, we're behind it 100%. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to approve fiscal year 1617 membership dues to the Rural Counties Environmental Services Joint Powers Authority. Do you have a second? Second. All right. Any other discussion? Great. We'll move on. Please pull the vote. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Napa? Yes. Commissioner Gastineau? Yes. Commissioner Inscore? Yes. Commissioner McClure? Yes. Very good. That that comes to the end of the agenda of the Solid Waste Management Authority. I suppose we officially are to adjourn from the Solid Waste Management Authority and reconvene as the Abandoned Vehicle Abatement Service Authority with one item, 7.1 discussion for regarding a possible action uh, receive, re about receiving uh, requests for proposal on removal and towing of abandoned vehicles. Sword. This is the uh, main activity of the Abandoned Vehicle Services JPA. Essentially, we're in the business of collecting abandoned vehicles. We use funds that are collected uh, as an additional fee per registration, one dollar per vehicle. And so that accumulates into a fund that then is available for cleaning up, uh, for uh, towing uh, illegally abandoned vehicles or abandoned vehicles of unknown origin. So we received one proposal from Northcrest Auto Center uh, for providing these towing services for the next four years. And as we just, that previous towing agreement has expired, staff recommend approval of this agreement. Uh, though the board should be aware that the uh, fees for towing have increased substantially 
uh, particularly for the ones in the outlying areas, such as the ones down in Klamath, have, that rate has gone up 67% in this one proposal, which will reduce the, availability, the number of vehicles that can be towed in a year before those funds become depleted. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, since Klamath, you know, of course, costs more, is there anybody in Klamath? Can we, like, maybe do it on, a, like, a Del Mar regional aspect or a district aspect? Uh, have a different, you know, maybe multiple? Well, we, we tried to set it up so that there are different rates in different zones. And so that's, that's why you have the different zones, one, two, three, four, and five, and the different rates, because obviously it will cost more to tow a vehicle from Klamath. And the idea is that we have competitive proposals. Since we just received the one proposal, our bargaining position is not as strong as it might be. Yeah, I understand that. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Howard. Hey, um, the other thing is, like, you know, why can't they uh, they put somebody somebody in Klamath, and then that you know they don't have to tow the cars all the way back here to Crescent City, and they just put them in Klamath, and then when the truck comes through, they just collect them in Klamath. That's a good suggestion. I don't, uh, and uh, you're correct in identifying the impound yard location as a key element to this whole thing. And so at various times, the county has said that they were, are interested in developing their own impound yard. To my knowledge, that has not yet happened. And so part of this proposal process is they have to propose where the impound yard is. The impound yard is essentially the place that you tow a vehicle of unknown origin to, and, and then it's held there as the paperwork gets cleared. Because, of course, in California, we want to make sure that if somebody has their vehicle stolen and it's abandoned somewhere, that at least that owner is, it has a chance to recover their vehicle. All right, Mr. Howard. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I guess my question is twofold. One, um, specifically on the advertising of this uh, RFP. Um, do we know that everybody got it? And then two, why such an increase when costs essentially, specifically distance, if I were to assume a 67% increase associated, let's say, with gas prices going up for diesel, I'm not seeing it. So I'm, I'm challenged right now with ensuring that the authority got the best deal possible. And two, why are we seeing such a significant cost increase? Those are really good questions. Um, we sent the RFP to each towing company. All I can say is that our experience the last three times we've gone through this process has been that we've had trouble getting responses. And I don't know whether that's because of the permitting issues or whether they're having trouble identifying the impound yard or maybe the towing companies feel like they have enough business and they don't really need this. A little hard to say. Can we um, possibly do some, do we have to take action on this tonight? Not absolutely. However, uh, the board should be aware that at this point in time, the abandoned vehicle abatement authority has no towing contract. So if there's a, a vehicle that needs to be towed that's abandoned, right now there is no mechanism under the ABA for doing that. Can't, wait. If we don't have a new contract, can't we continue to contract with the other person if they're willing to stay at that rate, mm. even though it's expired while we're in process of getting a new one? If they're will, if the towing company is willing to do that, probably not. Now that they know they're if, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sort of with Mr. Howard on this one. I saw that 67 percent. I'm just thinking, you know, it would be it would be different if if gas prices were going up. But there, I mean, because that to me that's the justification for distance. Plus, they're taking the stuff. They're taking the vehicles to Brookings, so sometimes, yeah. But and and this is during the period when the minimum wage laws in California will be going into effect, so that yeah. may be having some bearing. Could be. But uh, uh, these are really excellent questions, yeah, and we so could ask what was the cause of these rate increases. But as I said, there, we don't have a great bargaining position. And and I wouldn't do that just specifically for this particular bidder. Um, if you could give the authority some sense of what factors in to the, these type of cost changes, I mean, you've, you've expressed a few here today. 
let's get some solid footing so the authority has some understanding of what's going into this type of increase because I can't have, I can't approve that right now the way it stands yeah council can because we only had one response to our it was an RFP or an RFQ it was an RFP so if we only had one response to our RFP can we then ne directly negotiate with that applicant Um, you know, I think that we can. I think so. In the back of my head, it says that, but I'm not sure the rules. But. Um, and um, we could negotiate with them, and if uh, you know if that doesn't work out, you could you could reissue the RFP. But then we have a little bit of wiggle room. They now know they were the only thing. We're saying it's too. We would like to negotiate, and if they don't want to negotiate, we can re we can reauthorize the putting the bid out. And can the bid go to our bid? Can the RFP go to a towing company that we know is serving this area? Sorry. I don't. I don't no, see why not. As long as they have, questions you know, we can use. Um, con we use regularly yep. use contractors from Oregon as long as they have all the proper licensing, et cetera. So there's another partnership Yeah. You are. Uh, also, as far as the contract, if we could have it that it's not exclusive, so that uh, you know we could approve this, but then we could, if we want in the future we find some lower rate somewhere such as Klamath or some other arrangements that we could do that would, would that be possible it might be but um, the challenge is that I we just issued an RFP we got the one response so part of the inevitable interpretation of that is that the other five towing companies in the county are were either not didn't have capacity to provide a response or weren't interested all right, well, I'm, 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 I'm hearing a consensus that we want to continue this with some um, better clarification, but before we make that final decision, do we have any public comment? Jessica, do you really just, want to, to weigh in on Just to be this? clear, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing <laughs> is a, essentially consensus direction to try to negotiate better rates and to come back at a future meeting with whatever got negotiated or the status of those negotiations. Is Please. that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and... and uh, and then also the suggestion of trying to find some other alternative for Klamath, such as having an impound yard down there or, or any other solution. Yeah. Okay. All right. A a any further information you can provide us just so that we are making a better informed decision would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Mr. Warden. Thank you. Also in the back of my head, there's problems with the impound yard. That's the biggest, one of the biggest hurdles. So it's not that you can just site an impound yard anywhere. It's like this pretty convoluted way, and that's the reason that every tow company doesn't have an impound yard. You know, right, and there are issues, because right? of course they want to keep those areas secure, and oftentimes they, because they're part of real estate, then they also want to make sure there's income associated with that no real estate. All that. All right. Do you do you feel like you got clear enough direction from uh, us? I, I I believe it's clear that the board is not approving this contract as it stands. <laughs> that you're giving me direction to try to negotiate a, a better deal and to come back to the board with at least the results of those negotiations, if not a better deal that we can actually approve. Thank you. All right. Also, also if, if I could add, because uh, a couple of the other things we had mentioned. So another one would be the fact of whether or not we could go out with the RFP again because the, we only had one bid. And secondly, if we could uh, include uh, a greater service area, meaning Brookings, uh, so, so that this way we might be able to get uh, some better prices. So negotiation plus a broader understanding of possible options. Yeah. The, uh, with, 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 with limitations, obviously, of the time that you have to do that. Uh, just. So, you know, my first impulse on the Brookings towing companies is that they probably will not be able to 
effectively compete. One, because the, the laws pertaining to clearing a title in California are very different than the laws pertaining to uh, Oregon. The impound yard, if it wasn't located in Del Norte County, they would have to tow the vehicle to an impound yard in Oregon and then, and then somehow get it back. Some Only of some, of them. Them. some of them. The, the larger ones, essentially. The, those are usually the uh, motorized RVs. Well, we would appreciate you providing us with as much information as you can. Thank you, Jen. I, I will do so. All right. Anybody have anything? Any great words of, of wisdom to dispense before we adjourn? Yes, Mr. Howard. I have a question for counsel. Um, if commissioners receive um, complaints specific to personnel, where are those addressed? Uh, those should be given to the director. Okay. What if it involves the director? I think we had, um, didn't we address that? I thought it was somewhere. The chair. Yeah, I think the, those go to the chair. Okay. I think I thought one of our policies addressed that. Um, but yeah, if, it, if it's regarding the director, then the chair would be the okay. next higher up. Very good. All right. Maybe just for clarification, since it was a, it's, a, it's a good question to make sure that we do have that, if you could if you could route that information to us so that we all get that information and have it in front of us to know exactly what we do as opposed to us all going back trying to figure it out. That would be very helpful. I don't, I don't know what the specific is. But all right. Very good. Anything else? All right. We will adjourn to our next regular scheduled meeting, 3.30, September 20th, 2016, right here.